Hello everyone, welcome back to the Caddy Daddy and Bot Parts Garage. Today we're going to be working on this uh, Carter AFB uh, four barrel carburetor. Uh, these fit a lot of different makes and models of cars and very common carburetor used from the 50s into the 70s. Now this one here is kind of in bad shape. We're going to use it for an example of to show you guys how to tear one down. I've got another one that's been taken down, been run through the parts washer, everything's nice and clean. There are a few worn parts in it, which is good, so I can show you guys what to look for. Um, like I say, this one here is in, in pretty, pretty poor shape, but we're going to take it apart so you can see how it comes apart and see if there's parts we can salvage for the shelf. I fix up a lot of these for people, and so any little bits and pieces that are good, I'd like to have them around. So the, the carburetor, this has got two, two pieces. There's the top cover and, and the, the bottom. I like to take and space them up so they have something to sit on so that you can operate the, the linkages. It's very important when it comes to reassembly and adjustment. The thing that you need to do first is to um, all these linkages that connect from the bottom to the top, we need to get them disconnected. And what you want to be careful of is these little tiny clips like to go everywhere. And they are often very difficult to get a hold of. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to block your view to, to be able to get one of those out. In fact, those little pieces save all your trays when you have your takeout meals. Great for putting parts in. So we got that one out, so I'll pull that linkage off. Next one here is the uh, uh, accelerator pump. Slightly different style. This unit is very rusty and crusty. Throw that in for ultrasonic. And finally the choke lever, which we will, the easiest clip to get to is this one here. And before you start taking one of these apart, you probably want to take a few good photographs so you can see how yours went together because there are slight variations. Like if this was for a Buick, yeah, it would have the, the starter switch on it. And just little variations for different applications. Like I say, these were used in a lot of different cars. I like to take now, take these covers off. These are the uh, step-up pistons. This is what enriches the mixture when you step on the throttle. Manifold vacuum. That extends into the um, metering jet that's in the housing. This piston is pulled down by manifold vacuum against a spring. So when the car is under light load and the manifold vacuum is high, this is sucked down. The larger diameter of the rod, there's a step in it, it's very hard to see, but there's a step right there in the shiny section. When it's down, the larger diameter section blocks up some of the more of the jet, it leans the mixture out. Then as, when you step on the throttle and the manifold vacuum uh, drops, the spring pushes the plunger up and only the smaller tip is now in the jet. It allows the mixture to be richer. And on these, there is a little clip. That you can, a lot of these parts are really small and hard to see and easy to lose. That's the little clip. Now, some of these parts, like the pistons, the springs, the rods, the jets, and some of these parts that just uh, wear out uh, are, st are, are still available in what they call a strip kit, which is for going to the drag strip and tune in your carburetor. And depending on the fuel that's available in your area, if it's got ethanol in it, which most of it does now, I like to uh, go up in the jet size, get, let it run a little bit richer, uh, because, uh, allow more fuel so it doesn't run lean with the ethanol-based fuel. Let's see what's going on on this side. This side is... It's kind of jammed up. 
I, I say this carburetor is, is a parts only core, but for a demonstration it's fine. So we'll take the cover off. I'm going to have to leave that in for right now. Now, if depending on what accessories are on the carburetor, your screws will be different lengths in different locations. And just in general, as you can see, the screws are different. There's one hidden in here. Don't forget it. Yeah, so you want to pay attention to the length of these screws because they are all different as you go around the body of the carburetor. Something you can do to make sure you're getting the screws back in the right place is when you have the cover off, as you're getting ready to put it on, put the screws where you believe that they go. See how far they stick out at the, underneath. They should all stick out about the same amount. So if you've got one that's real shallow, another one that's real long, you got something in the wrong place. Now as we open this up, we'll make sure that we've got all the linkages, which we have. We want to lift straight up, and we want to avoid destroying the gasket. I'm going to set that top piece there. I'm going to set the main part of the housing aside. And like here, if we drop this, oh, that one's hard to get to, but like if I drop that one in. See how those protrude? A, kind of a similar amount. Uh, just keep that in mind when you're putting, putting the unit back together. Now on the top, we'll first of all remove the accelerator pump li uh, linkage. If we can, like I say, this one is very bad. Pull that off, and there's a little S-shaped link and the accelerator pump pulls out. I save all the parts, I clean up all the parts just to have them for reference. I'm going to try to get this, um, this metering rod out and it is stuck so we're going to let the ultrasonic do its job on it. Now we want to get the floats out, shake the float, especially if the carburetor has been in service, see if it's got gas in it. If the float's got gas in it, then you got a problem that there. These both sound dry and there's nothing rattling. Sometimes you'll hear a rattling sound inside and that's because gas has been in there and dried up. So the carburetor jet, or the um, fuel bowl um, valves. Let me get a larger screwdriver. You really should use the proper uh, tool for these, uh, which, which is still obtainable. Um, if not, you can be very careful and keep a screwdriver very well centered. And so I'm holding my fingers on either side of Very carefully lift the gasket off because you want to compare all this stuff. Um, and you want to make sure that you don't damage something in case the kit doesn't have it. We haven't had that problem, but some places are having trouble with rebuild kits um, being short on parts, missing parts because of the ongoing shortages in the supply chain. We've not had that problem so far. But we want to better be safe than sorry. I mean, if you had to, you could cut that out yourself if you didn't have a gasket. So, like I say, just preserve all the old parts and so you can use them to compare with the new ones. So there we go. We've got this um, cleared out. That part's completely stripped down. Now we come on to the 
main body. There is a uh, the spring for the accelerator pump is right there. That's the return spring. I I leave these little baffles in. They don't really need to come out, especially if you're using the ultrasonic. Um, now what we'll do is that's a hot compensator. Pull that out. Like I say, depending on what this basic carburetor went for decades. So yours may be different than this one. Probably will be different from this one. And that's okay. You got your reference in the in your service manual. You got your rebuild kit. It's got all the instructions for your year. Those are stuck fast in there. You got things that are stuck, you got just gotta be real careful. Try to, to knock them loose without damaging. Like I say this carburetor is in pretty poor condition. There's your air door. insect nest down in there. That's your gasket for your Venturi. And a nice cloud of dust just came out. Get the main jets or the uh, main Venturis out. Okay, this is nice. I guess the gasket tore. It almost looked like there was two gaskets. Might have been two. Still some stuck down in there. Let the ultrasonic get at it. Okay, now a place you guys lose parts from is underneath this accelerator pump nozzle. There's what in there looks like a um, needle from the fuel inlet. Right down that hole, that's where the fuel comes up from over here in the pump. There's a little, there's that. Don't lose that. A lot of guys do, then they wonder why they don't have an accelerator pump. And that goes down in this hole here. Oh, and there's some nice rancid gas in there still. So we will remove the idle needle. The other idle needle. The idle air screw. This is a part that goes away in later years. And finally, we'll take the choke off. You can see where this is kind of corroded and nasty around here, and there's that material. The, uh, the heat stove probably has, whatever car this came off of, the heat stove probably was starting to corrode out, and exhaust was making its way up into the choke housing. You can see it's it's kind of stuck down there. See all that black, all that black corrosion in there. Now 
Another place I'll show you here in a minute where guys getting some trouble on these. You make a run to the other toolbox. I'll be back with you in a minute. I had to go get a, a little screwdriver to get that screw out that's hidden up in there. It head was full of rust, so I had to get kind of a fine tip screwdriver to get that out. So that, and on the side here, you have the three mounting holes, and that's a little vacuum bleed that mates to right here. And there's a little gasket here. It's hard as a rock. So don't forget, you have to get that gasket cleaned out of there. I'll put it in the ultrasonic, see if that breaks it loose. But don't forget to get that out and get a new one in. Should be in the kit. And this one that's in so filthy of condition. I'm trying to get that piston pulled up a good long ways. So they can get so the ultrasonic can get in there and clean it. So I'm gonna go throw this in the machine. Let it sit in there and roast for a little while. We'll see how it cleans up. I've got another one that's all ready to go that's all clean. So I'm going to be bringing those parts out, setting those up, show you how to put this back together. We'll just, and we'll just see how this cleans up. It's got a lot of worn parts and it's, it's a bit sad outside. But you got the gist of how to take the unit apart and what to watch out for. So we'll go throw this into clean. I'll get set up. And uh, when you join, join me here again, we'll be putting the unit together and be showing you how to make the adjustments on it. At Caddy Daddy Presents, it's all about giving back. Please enjoy the video of the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Helena and Calistoga. You can donate by clicking the link in the video description.